So I just got back from Pearl, and now I finally know why that the trailer that they played after X in theaters is so incredibly hard to find. More about that, and so much more, coming up. Rumor has it they only take one gal per town. It has to be me. We're looking for someone with X Factor. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of End Explain. My name is John here on Burns Views, and today we are talking about Ty West's new film, Pearl, starring Mia Goth, David Cornsweet, Tandy Wright, Matthew Sunderland, and Emma Jenkins Pro. But before we begin, if you could, be sure to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe. It really does help the channel a lot. Our new goal is to try to get all the way up to 40,000 subs because Disney basically told us in a nutshell that we're not cool enough for press screenings until we do. So that's where we're at. <laughs> Typically I don't care, because I don't really care about Disney movies, Marvel shows, Hulu shows, Patience Good, um, but I do like films that come out from 20th Century Studios, which is now taken over by Disney, and I have to get my sub count up if I want to go to said press screenings. Also, I took a look at the, uh, the difference between my views and subs and the the divide is wide, guys. I'm, I'm, I, holy crap. So, you know, they tell me that I should ask more often, so now I'm asking. So, without any further ado, let's talk about Pearl. There's going to be a whole lot of spoilers ahead for both Pearl and the movie X, if you haven't seen those movies. I've got reviews right here you can go check out that are spoiler free. And without any further ado, let us talk about it. Ty West, Mia Goth, Pearl. Pearl has world premiere at the Venice Film Festival on September 3rd before getting its wide release on the 16th. Secretly filmed simultaneously with X, Pearl serves as that film's prequel, showing the title's character early life in 1918, six decades before the events of X. A trailer was shown at the end of theatrical screenings of X in certain territories, although it has since been hard to find. Eventually, a trailer was dropped, but proved to be not the same one. If you'd like to know more about the original post-credits trailer, be sure to click on the link in the top corner, because I did find a bootleg of it, and I do break it down frame by frame. Ty West and Mia Goth collaborated on the script via FaceTime during a mandatory two-week quarantine in New Zealand due to COVID-19 prior to the filming of X. Originally, the script started as a playbook for Pearl's backstory, but as the writing went on, it became a fully fleshed out script that West would go on to submit. Also, fun fact, the original version of the script initially was going to have the film style to be a black and white drama in the style of Ingmar Bergman. They had only hoped that A24 would agree to make the film, Fortunately, the project was greenlit before the filming began on either film. I kind of love this, because it's something you really don't see every day. Typically, you have to wait two years, and maybe even more, to get a sequel. But this kind of harkens back to the olden days of, like, the golden age of the 80s horror slasher, where movies would come out once a year, kind of like Halloween, uh, Friday the 13th, The Nightmare on Elm Street. They always banged them out, and it's kind of nice to see again. To prepare for the tone of the movie, director-co-writer Ty West suggested that Mia Goth watch Whatever Happened to Baby Jane and The Wizard of Oz. Visually and tonally, West wanted to tell a story that stood in contrast to what the movie was about, a young woman's coming of age during challenging times. I initially had this image in my mind of an austere German mother chopping wood who looked like she was out of a Bergman movie or something, and that movie would have maybe been great, but as the story progressed, I was more interested in something like a Disney-inspired version of that same austere world. I wanted to put the viewer in the headspace of a children's film, perhaps set up something similar to a movie like The Wizard of Oz, and then make it zig instead of zag. The Wizard of Oz is as famous as it gets. It's a movie that deals with fantasy and imagination, the hardship of growing up on a farm and wanting to escape. It was in the ether when I wrote Pearl, much in the same way that the Texas Chainsaw Massacre was when I wrote X, but they wound up being very different movies. There's something fun about thinking as a viewer that you know what a movie is going to be, but having the filmmaker ask you along the way, are you sure? Wes also turned to some live-action Disney movies featuring squeaky-clean protagonists who never take a walk on the wild side. 
There is a purity, a sense of wonder in those stories. The optimistic, anything is possible element that becomes magical in Mary Poppins. And there's a fantasy element, of course. The idea that fucked up things never happen in these movies because they don't belong. Pearl was an opportunity to do something that I hadn't seen before. To take Disney-style aesthetic and weave it in a much darker and harder edge story. It was a way to take those archetypical Disney characters and give them more real and even surreal challenges. West sums up that in the way that X is a movie in which technical craft was important to me, whether acting, cinematography, music, or design, Pearl is the same. It's a movie that a modern audience, who may not typically think about cinema as much as I do, can come away with an appreciation for how it is presented. Me personally, I kinda suspect that this movie was also inspired by Joker. It's kinda hard not to see that. You know, the movie made over a billion dollars. It's one of the biggest movies that came out in that year, and now we're getting this. Um, and, you know, we had Cruella that came out the following year. They're making Wicked. It's not the first, not the last. But considering how good Pearl is, I really didn't care. Cruella, not so much. You can, you can keep that movie. The film is also lightly inspired by Mary Poppins, the work of Douglas Sirk, and of course, Psycho, one of Wes's absolute favorites. What about in Psycho? You love that movie. Filming started shortly after X had wrapped, this time utilizing the crew from Avatar The Way of Order, as they were taking a break and able to film, and were easily the best choice as they had already completed self-isolation during what is probably the worst time during the pandemic, stating, We're already building all the stuff, it's COVID, and we're on this one place on Earth where it's safe to make a movie. Ending explained. Alright guys, so obviously uh, this is going to be more of a discussion piece because, you know, we know how it ends. <laughs> Our secret. But man, Pearl would not survive in Hollywood at all, talent or not. She goes to one audition, gets rejected, and has a mental breakdown. Do you not know how ho Of course she doesn't know. Of course she doesn't know. But let's talk about it. By the end of the movie, everything kind of happens the way you would predict it would happen. There's four people that get killed, plus a goose. And if you've seen the trailer, you kind of know how they already die. The projectionist gets stabbed with a pitchfork. Her mother gets lit on fire. Her father doesn't get pushed into the lake with the uh, alligator, but is killed off screen? It's kinda lame. And yeah, I know, they show a bird in a cage. That's supposed to be Pearl. It's symbolism. I get it. It's just, I want to watch a horror movie. Come on. And of course, the sister-in-law gets killed by the axe. So all of it is in the trailer, which was a little bit disheartening. I wanted one kill to not be in the trailer, but... When you have such a low count, I think of four plus a goose, like you have to, you gotta amp up that trailer, man. You gotta sell X, right? So I, I get it. But at the end, there is a fantastic monologue where Pearl sits down and talks to her sister-in-law and she has this like fake conversation of what she would say to Howard. And it's very reminiscent of say Joker and a lot of things that you've seen before where she's just kind of like, I'm lonely, I'm sad, I don't want this life, I wanna be famous. And I did what I did because, you know, it felt good and I wanted to, and I wanted to get out of this life, and I hate you for leaving me, and blah blah blah. It's really good, I don't know it verbatim, but the big takeaway that I took away from this monologue was that apparently she was pregnant, and it's probably a little debatable on whether or not she killed the baby or not. Um, she talks about how, you know, I couldn't raise a child because, you know, the, the world is a dark, bleak place, and I, you know, I can barely get by on my own, let alone raise a child. How can I do that? I was happy when it died. But knowing Pearl, she she probably did something, you know? Uh, <laughs> you know, it wouldn't surprise me if she found a, a flight of stairs to kind of just fling herself down. I don't know, do you buy that whole she had a miscarriage? Because I don't. She's saying things like it felt like a sickness, that she compared the child to like one of the barn animals that needed attention, that was too needy. I'm like, oh, Jesus, lady. Why, why? Oof. And yeah, all, all along the entire movie, there's a whole bunch of Easter eggs that I think were kind of like hit or miss. A lot of callbacks to the original movie. One, the big obvious one is, you know, she's constantly going, shh, it'll be our secret. That comes up a couple of times. Uh, of course, she says, I'm a star. That comes back. Make me the biggest star the world has ever known. I'm a fucking star. The whole world is gonna know my name. The whole world is gonna know my name. One thing I picked up on is uh, one of the characters say, it's very unique, the truth of the fact of the matter. I've heard the truth of the matter, I've heard the fact of the matter, but the truth of the fact of the matter? And they say it in X, too. The fact of the truth of the matter is, we turn folks on, and that scares them. But I guess it's like Ty West's way of like, hey, here's my thesis. 
you know. Of course, you got the lake, and it's like the first time that she puts bodies in that lake with the alligator, the whole bit. You see the car going in, very reminiscent of the movie Psycho, and of course, a call back to X. And again, more similar homages to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the final shot where Howard comes home, and he's like, whoa, whoa Pearl, <laughs> and she's just like, Howard. I'm so glad you're home. And it looks just like the family from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, down to the guy, Grandpa, in the wheelchair. It's, it's, it's no mistake, it's done very intentionally. If you watch those movies side by side, you're like, yeah, we're, we're going back to that. And I kind of dug that. Um, what I didn't dig was the fact that they, they have like a close-up on Mia Goth. And, you know, she does like this like really, really crazy-ass smile and shit. And what kind of took me out of it, it felt like Ty West was like, just keep it rolling, just keep it rolling, we'll play it during the credits. But to me, I'm going, why is Howard not saying anything? Am I to believe that he's just making intense eye contact with Pearl for like a minute without saying a damn thing? This is a guy who just got back from war. He's, he's on his toes, more or less. I mean, not entirely, but you would think that this guy knows how to survive. He knows how to get by. He has to evade danger, not be a deer in the headlights. So, I know why they did it. It was a creative choice, but in my head, it's like, you know, the way the scene should have played out should have been like, Oh, Howard, I'm so glad you're home. And Howard's just like, Oh, Pearl, why the fuck did you kill my sister? God damn it, bitch, you gotta die! Boom! Just kills her instantly. Instantly! If I was Howard, I would have killed her on the spot. It's me or you, and it's not gonna be me. I'm not gonna get killed, because you're a crazy bitch, which she is. He ki She killed his sister. She killed, uh, you know, her family. She killed the projectionist. She killed that poor goose. So for him to just be like... Yeah, it's no big deal. Let's do this for like the next like 60 years. It's kind of a little bit insane, um, but I think that this might be the door they're keeping open for a potential Pearl sequel. Not an X sequel, but another chapter with Pearl. Granted, if Ty West is really trying to build a similar franchise with lots of sequels, kind of like a Halloween, um, he might be picking up on the fact that, you know, every 10 years, there's always a, a, a reboot, a remake, a sequel. And with Mia Goth in the role of Pearl, you could revisit her every 10 years for the next 50 years and make a sequel. You wouldn't even need that much makeup. You would just have the actress age naturally and it would probably work and it would probably keep churning out. And you can visit different decades. Uh, Ty West could use different types of movie making styles. I know every type of movie he likes to change up the style and do something completely different. The last bohemian that stayed here was the same. Traipsing around, barely in the clothes, enticing my wife. Yeah. Even though he's kind of using a very similar template as far as narrative, I think if there's one thing that was kind of weak sauce in this movie is that it was a little bit too predictable. You just feel like you're connecting dots. You don't necessarily feel like you're... Uh, watching something new and different. I would compare it to something like um, the Animatrix. You remember the Animatrix? Years ago, they put it out right after the, the Matrix came out. It kind of answers some of those like little tiny little questions that maybe you're curious about. Like for example, we find out that she doesn't like blondes because at the audition, uh, she was, you know, turned down because she wasn't a blonde, which pays off nicely to this line. Was that the one? You know I don't like blondes. But some things are just a little bit too much. You know, again, there's like uh, the scene where like, you know, the two characters are sitting at this table having lemonade. There's a lot of, uh, I guarantee you, uh, a lot of side-by-side -side comparisons that can be made between the two movies. And sometimes it's fun, and sometimes it kind of overstays its welcome. I, I hope Ty West puts a little bit more time into the writing section of it, because I feel like it's a little bit too much of the same from X, but at the same time, lacking what we really loved about X. You know, I, I, the whole time I kept thinking to myself, I miss Kid Cudi. I miss uh, Brittany Snow, I think it is. You need that ensemble. You can't just lean entirely into Mia Goth. And I felt like the projectionist and um, the, the mother, they're fine. You know, the mother is basically the mom from Carrie. And the projectionist guy is kind of like a variation of Wayne. There's a scene where he's talking. I swear to God, it's like the same thing that Wayne is saying to RJ. It is the same kind of talk. And you're like, this is basically Wayne again. But we don't have any characters that we 
feel bad for when they die. I mean, we do a little bit. We don't want any of these characters to get killed. They all kind of feel like they're helping Pearl. They want to help Pearl. Even the mother, she has a line of dialogue where she's like, I know the crappy things that you've done, the terrible things that you've done. I'm keeping you on this farm as, like, protection. And unlike the movie Carrie, there's actually some weight behind this where you feel like, yeah, you should keep this lady, this crazy lady, on the farm because she should not leave. And going back to what I said before, the scene where Howard walked in to find all this, the, the Texas Chainsaw family sitting there, dead and all that, that was a scene that was cut out of the original trailer that was shown after X at all the film festivals that a lot of people were like, wasn't playing at my show. Um, and I can see why they cut it out. I mean, they keep the scene where he's blowing up, which is a fantasy, but I can see why they would want to save that. It also shows Ruth, um, you know, dead. So you don't want to show that too much. I totally get why they cut it out. Um, if you want to take a look, I have the trailer breakdown right here. It kind of talks about the trailer. You can find it if you go digging deep enough. I can't upload it. People keep asking me, like, just upload the trailer. I can't. They'll take it down. I've seen other people do it. It gets taken down immediately. But I did go frame by frame talking about it, and YouTube seems to be okay with that. Speaking more on the ending, uh, when the sister-in-law is trying to escape, and she tracks her down, and she's got the axe, and she, she hits her in the back, and she knocks her down, um, she says that line, um, it's, it's not what I want, it's making the best of what I have, which of course is a callback to what her mom said, but I thought for sure, because the next scene, we're seeing like a tracking shot go down into the basement, and I'm like, oh no, the sister-in-law is going to be chained, she's going to be just like that person in the original, that would have been the creepiest ending ever, I mean, we know it's kind of coming a little bit, because it's shown in X, but that would have been so much creepier and I kind of wanted a little bit more of that in a certain way like this movie is um it's not really as scary as I was hoping it to be I mean it is very stylistic it's very creative it's very it's a great homage to uh the, the 1950s like singing in the rain I get it but like it's not creepy I'll, the first half I would argue was a little slow um and the second half it really heats up and but again like everybody else is saying they're right Mia Goth is holding this movie on her back. I think if you put a lesser actress in this movie, it would have fallen apart. It would have kind of been kind of way too boring and people would have been like, what, what is this? So again, that goes back to what I said. I think Ty West needs to, I know he shot this back to back with X, but I think he needs to spend a little bit more time on the script the way he probably did with the, the first movie, X itself. So that's my only critique. I still enjoyed it, don't get me wrong. It's just that once you've seen it, I don't know if it's a movie I'm going to revisit a lot. I, I've watched X about five times. I watched it right before I uh, went to go see Pearl. I've seen that movie a bunch of times now since it came out. It hasn't been out that long. It's only been out for a couple of months. I don't know if I'm going to revisit Pearl as much. It's, 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 uh, I don't know. There's just something about it. I just can't really, I mean, I will, but it's not nearly as good as X. Also, I'll be honest. I don't think we're done with Pearl. I know we got Maxine coming up in the pipeline, but I don't think we're really done. Keep in mind, there's that photo that we see on the wall in X, where she seems to be doing some kind of dancing, um, and I don't think she's done. I think she's going to try to be a dancer again on some level. I don't know where that photo came from. It could have been a photo that Howard just took and put on the wall, maybe. But keep in mind, Howard does go away for World War II, and I could definitely see Ty West revisiting this character to, again, see what Pearl is up to during that time period. But overall, I think it was a solid movie. Probably would give it like an, a 7.5 out of 10, give or take. I think X is like a solid 9 or 10. This is like above average. I just don't know if it has a lot of rewatch value. Last week we had a poll and uh, we asked about Barbarian. I don't want to, I kind of did myself in on this one. I don't want to talk about the poll question too much in the sense that if you haven't seen Barbarian, I don't want to spoil it. So I'm going to op I'm going to talk very vaguely, but also tell you how it shook loose. Essentially, uh, it was overwhelmingly about like 80% of you said, yeah, this guy did exactly what he was accused of doing. No doubt about it. Um, I'd say like maybe about, I think, 10% said of you that you were unsure. And then like one person was like, I don't think he did it. So that's the poll. Thanks for playing. Um, this week's poll is going to be, what movie from Ty West would you like to see us cover next? Because we have covered X, we have covered Pearl, we have covered The House of the Devil, 
Um, I have seen The Sacrament. I have seen, uh, what's that other one called? The Innkeepers. That's it. So let me know down below. who, Which movie would you like to see us go deep dive into? And uh, be sure to comment down below, guys. We could really use the subs because we want to get into Disney like we said earlier. Be sure to subscribe. Be sure to comment down below. What did you think of Pearl? Are you checking it out today, this weekend? Comment down below. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. I have been John here on End Explained. You just got burned here on Birds of Views, and we will see you next time.